Mr. Mitsuhara, a Japanese language interpreter, began working as a translator for Mr. Otani when Mr. Otani first came to the United States to begin playing professional baseball. Mr. Mitsuhara had first met Mr. Otani in 2013, so the two men knew each other. Mr. Otani did not speak or understand English, while Mr. Mitsuhara knew English and was familiar with the United States. As a result, Mr. Mitsuhara acted as Mr. Otani's de facto manager. In 2018, shortly after Mr. Otani arrived from Japan, Mr. Mitsuhara helped Mr. Otani set up a bank account. That was a bank account that was used to deposit Mr. Otani's salary payments from professional baseball. Mr. Mitsuhara had access to that bank account and he refused to give access to Mr. Otani's other professional advisors, including his agent, his accountant, and his financial advisor. And he told them that Mr. Otani wanted to keep that account private. In 2021, Mr. Mitsuhara began placing sports bets with a group of bookmakers who were linked to an illegal gambling operation. Over time, Mr. Mitsuhara's bets became more and more frequent. And over time, Mr. Mitsuhara's bets became larger and larger in amounts. Messages between Mr. Mitsuhara and the bookmaker show that he lost considerable money on those bets, but he continued to make the wagers thousands of wagers over time. The bets do not appear to have been made on the sport of baseball. At the same time he started placing the bets with bookmakers, Mr. Mitsuhara began using Mr. Otani's account to make payments for the bank account. Mr. Mitsuhara had helped set up the account so he was familiar with it, and he used that familiarity to access the account. The evidence we've gathered over the past few weeks has demonstrated that in total, Mr. Mitsuhara stole over $16 million from Mr. Otani's account in order to pay for these illegal sports bets. Phone and bank records show that Mr. Mitsuhara appears to have accessed Mr. Otani's bank account online. What is more, Mr. Mitsuhara lied to the bank to access the account. For instance, we obtained recordings of telephone calls in which Mitsuhara spoke with bank employees, lied to them about being Mr. Otani, gave personal biographical information for Mr. Otani in order to impersonate him, and thereby convince the bank to approve large wire transfers of large amounts of money to the bookmakers. I want to emphasize this point. Mr. Otani is considered a victim in this case. There is no evidence to indicate that Mr. Otani authorized the over $16 million of transfers from his account to the bookmakers. Mr. Tani has stated that he did not authorize these transfers, that he did not grant Mitsuhara access to the account. But on top of that, we reviewed both Mitsuhara's and Mr. Tani's phones and their communications over time, over several years, thousands of communications reviewed by a Japanese linguist. And that review has demonstrated no discussion of betting, wagers, or authorization for transfers to bookmakers. Furthermore, there would have been no reason for Mr. Mitsuhara to impersonate Mr. Otani in calls with the bank if these transfers had been authorized. Also, when Mr. Mitsuhara would occasionally win on his sports bets, the winnings were not deposited in Mr. Otani's bank account, but rather in Mr. Mitsuhara's personal bank account. Finally, in a text message with one of the bookmakers, which is detailed in the complaint, which is avail available to you, Mr. Mitsuhara admitted to the bookmaker to stealing from Mr. Otani. Let me summarize. Our investigation has revealed that due to the position of trust he occupied with Mr. Otani, Mr. Mitsuhara had unique access to Mr. Otani's finances. Mr. Mitsuhara used and abused that position of trust in order to take advantage of Mr. Otani. 
Mr. Mitsuhara used and abused that position of trust in order to plunder Mr. Otani's bank account to the tune of over $16 million. And Mr. Mitsuhara did all this to feed his insatiable appetite for illegal sports betting. In this way, we allege in the complaint, Mr. Mitsuhara committed fraud on a massive scale. And let me note, what we filed today here is a complaint. Mr. Mitsuhara is presumed to be innocent, but you can see all the allegations that we've made in the complaint that's been filed. Finally, let me offer some thanks in this case. I wanna thank the amazing investigative team in this case for the work that they did. Investigators with IRS criminal investigation, investigators with Homeland Security investigations, and with our office, United States Attorney's Office for the Central District of California, worked tirelessly, worked quickly, and worked thoroughly to bring this charge against Mr. Mitsuhara. I wanna thank in particular the Assistant United States Attorneys in my office who worked on this case. That would be AUSA's Jeff Mitchell, AUSA Rachel Agress, and AUSA Dan Boyle. Let me now, before we take any Q&A, introduce to the podium, IRS Special Agent in Charge, Tyler Hatcher. Good morning, thanks, Martine. As you've heard, my name is Tyler Hatcher. I'm the Special Agent in Charge for IRS Criminal Investigation here in the Los Angeles Field Office. We often get asked, why is IRS involved in these kind of cases? And IRS Criminal Investigation Special Agents are the best in the world at following the money. And I want to uh, give my comments to, uh, to shed some light on, on how quickly the federal government, and in particular, U.S. Attorney's Office, my office, and HSI, marshaled our resources to get a resolution to a victim, and in this case, Mr. Otani. The criminal complaint that was filed today definitively shows that that money, the $16 million that's in question, was, in fact, stolen. And we want to continue IRS criminal investigations um, efforts in protecting sports at the highest levels. We have a long history of getting involved in cases uh, dealing with sports at the highest levels. And this is just another great example of the federal government working together for a quick resolution. I'll turn that over to Eddie Wing. Thanks, Tyler. Good morning, everyone. My name is Eddie Wong, and I'm the special agent in charge for Homeland Security Investigations here in Los Angeles. Uh, HSI is the principal investigative arm of the Department of Homeland Security. And one of our top priorities is targeting illicit uh, financial activities. As you just heard earlier today, a uh, federal criminal complaint was filed alleging that Mr. Ipe Mizuhara uh, illegally transferred billions of dollars from Mr. Otani's bank account for which he was not authorized to do so. These charges stem from the outstanding work of our special agents uh, assigned to the HSI-led El Camino Real Financial Crimes Task Force, who worked collaboratively with our steadfast partners at the IRS Criminal Investigation and the U.S. Attorney's Office. In particular, I'd like to take a quick second to recognize uh, the outstanding work uh, done by the prosecutors on this case, uh, Assistant uh, U.S. Attorneys uh, Jeff Mitchell, Dan Boyle, and Rachel Agress. Thank you for your work on this matter. Uh, look, there is much work to be done regarding financial crime in the greater Los Angeles metropolitan area, uh, but the, elder, uh, the El Camino Real Financial Crimes Task Force is up to the challenge and will continually, excuse me, and will continue to deal diligently target financial crimes like this. Thank you. I'm gonna to try to coordinate Q&A, so show of hands. Nobody? Oh, get out of here. <laughs> you don't know. Uh, what started the investigation? What led you to look into this and um, find out, uh, Mr. Mizumara? There was an ongoing federal criminal investigation into illegal uh, gambling businesses operating not just in our district, but throughout the country. And that investigation ultimately revealed this bank fraud. As, as you mentioned, um, this was pretty fast for a federal investigation of this magnitude. Um, what led to such a quick resolution here? And was the popularity of Shohei Otani and his reputation, did that factor into wanting to get this resolved quickly? We understood there was a significant amount of public interest in this case. There were a lot of question marks out there in terms of what had occurred. 
we wanted to get to those questions. I want to emphasize, though, that while we were able to work on this case uh, rapidly, it was a very thorough investigation. You will see in the complaint review of thousands of communications, review of bank records, review of phone records, uh, interviews that were done with several individuals related to this. So a very thorough investigation was done. And if I could ask a quick follow up, you, you said earlier that you don't believe that the bets were made on baseball. How certain are you of that at this moment? Based on the review that we've done, and it is, as I mentioned, a very thorough review, we do not believe any bets were made on baseball games. Yes. Given all the evidence that you just laid out, what kind of penalty or punishment do you think Mr. Mizuhara could be facing? And does Mr. Otani have any chance of ever recouping any of that money that has been lost and stolen? Mr. Mizuhara faces a charge of bank fraud. Bank fraud carries a statutory maximum penalty of 30 years imprisonment. But the ultimate sentence that he would receive, if convicted, would be based on a determination by the judge. The judge considers all the factors, all the background to come up with the appropriate sentence. That is for the court to decide. We will provide all the facts to make sure the court is fully informed in making that decision. Can you talk about the degree to which Mr. Otani cooperates with the investigation involved? Mr. Otani, as I mentioned, has been established as a victim in this case. I want to be clear that Mr. Otani has cooperated fully and completely in this investigation. He's not only spoken to investigators, he's provided access to his digital devices, uh, to his personal information, to ensure that justice was done in this case. And to what degree did uh, Ipe cooperate? Excuse me, I didn't hear your question. To what degree did Ipe cooperate in the investigation, uh, Mr. Mizuhara? Uh, Mr. Mitsuhara is charged in this case. He's presumed innocent, and I'll leave it at that. Oh, has what is it, what are the next steps? Um, has Mizuhara already pled guilty, or what will be happening after this uh, criminal complaint? So this is the filing of a criminal complaint. Those are allegations that have been made. A criminal charge is filed. Uh, Mr. Mitsuhara will now have to appear on that criminal complaint. That appearance should happen sometime in the next few days. Following that, we will prosecute the case wherever it goes. Whether Mr. Mitsuhara admits his guilt or whether he decides to contest his guilt. We will follow it where the law appropriately leads us. Okay, and a follow up on where will he be appearing? He will be appearing in federal district court in our district. We'll get you the details on that. Any more? How much? Go, go right here. Go will Mr. Tani continue to be asked to uh, take part in the investigation? Mr. Otani has cooperated, as I said, completely and fully in this investigation. We expect him to continue to cooperate fully uh, in this investigation. We don't have specifics in terms of requests that we would have right now, but certainly over time, we expect that cooperation to continue. Take two more, Steph. Did um, Mr. Mizuhara say to his the bookmakers, did he say he was a representative of Mr. Otani? Did he ever reference Mr. Otani and his communications with the bookmakers? We don't have uh, those types of facts to give to you. What I can say is uh, Mr. Mizuhara was the lead. He was the one placing all the bets. He was the one doing all the interaction. And these bets were made on his behalf and for himself. As I mentioned, he, he lost over $16 million, but occasionally he would win. That money did not go to any account owned by Mr. Otani. That money would go to an account that was personally owned by Mr. Mitsuhara. But did he say like when he's placing bets, hey, I am, you know, sort of for, for, for boasting. You know, I, I am I'm a representative of Mr. Otani, not not placing bets for him, but sort of boasting his connection. Sure. I'm not aware of that. When you have a detailed complaint, you can review it and you'll see some of the communications there. Matt, um, on the impersonation to the bank, uh, was that just on one occasion? And can you talk about how you got the recording? And was he speaking in English in that or in Japanese? Just um, walk us through how you obtained that. Okay, and, nice. um, any further details you can share? So in investigation, in investigations of this sort, we often obtain records from every relevant party, including banks. Banks will at times uh, have recordings of communications related to an account. We we're able to obtain those recordings in this case. There was more than one recording where Mr. Mitsuhara impersonates Mr. Otani in order to allow a large transfer to take place. Many of you, I'm sure, have experience with this in your personal lives. A, a transaction takes place. The bank may view that as suspicious, may reach out. In this case, when they reached out, 
they would get Mr. Mitsuhara, who would pretend to be Mr. Otani to make sure that the money went through. Okay, last one right here. I was just going to ask if you had any um, dialogue with Major League Baseball during this process. The investigators have had dialogue with uh, the victim in this case, Mr. Otani, and had dialogue with other interested parties, and I will leave it at that. Not, not with MLB. Other question? Yes. Has Mitsuhara been arrested and booked, and has Matthew Boyer faced any charges? So, as I mentioned earlier, Mr. Mitsuhara is expected to make his appearance in the next coming days, and he'll make his appearance in this district.